G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Saturday here in Australia and looky, looky here. My goodness, Bitcoin dominance is under 50%, 49.8% now, just under. The weekend is here. <sighs> Things are going to get very, very interesting from here. I mean, altcoins are going to start to do crazy stuff. I am concerned though that... The bull run is a lot closer to the end than what we're thinking. And look, as I said before, it may not be the end of the bull run, but I think we're probably going to have a big major pullback sometime soon. You know, like we looked at that story yesterday from Mike Novogratz, I think there will be a washout. Things are just, yeah, a little bit too crazy. I mean, I thought Bitcoin's price would have been sort of higher by now. And look, I could be wrong and I hope I'm wrong, but I just get the feeling Bitcoin can't stay under this kind of dominance for too long and I think what will happen is number one Bitcoin will probably have a pretty big uh, pullback and then the altcoins will just dump super hard like really really hard so again I never offer financial advice but my personal opinion is if you, if you haven't taken profits and you are already you know fairly well in profit just consider taking some you don't have to take everything else everything out sorry and again it's your decision make your own mind up but geez, things don't last like this forever without there being some, yeah, kind of big catastrophic sort of moments in the crypto space anyway. So just be very, very careful. But I mean, this means altcoins should really start to run. This might take, you know, a month or two before we have a big shakeout, but it might take till tomorrow as well. So yeah, just, you know, be prepared. Something like this could happen. Uh, and again, you know, if you, if you kind of miss the shakeout, again never financial advice just my personal opinion is don't panic and sell at a loss you may as well just hold and wait and see what will happen in the future selling at a loss like if you know it's a tiny loss like 10 percent loss or something then i guess you can kind of wear that but if you're down you know like 50 percent or something then you know really what have you got to lose another 50 percent then you've lost everything and again depending on what you put your money into it's unlikely you'll lose everything anyway you just might have to hold for basically another four years and trust me i know how painful that is and it won't be four years it'll be less because I bought at the peak of 2017, didn't sell anything, uh, still have all those coins. I swapped the coins between a few different things during that time, but never sold anything. So as I said, I put about $800 in late 2017, turned into, uh, I think about $4,200. Uh, didn't know enough about the cycles, watched it turn into about $330, $350. So $800 to $4,200 to $300 and sort of $30, $350. That same $800, I haven't added to it, it's just sitting there by itself, is now worth over $6,000. So I just had to sit on it long enough and I made that money back and some. So that's what you need to be mindful of. We could have a really big shakeout and it might not take, you know, two years or four years. It might be just a couple of months, but don't panic sell something when you've lost a whole lot of it. Well, again, I can't tell you that. It's not financial advice. But for me, if I'd lost, you know, over 50% of it, I would go, all right, well, I can only lose another 50% or I can gain. So yeah, for me, I would simply hold and just wait and see because generally, everything has its moment where it pumps again that's what we're seeing at the moment all right so let's move on so eth dominance down market cap is down but we're still above two trillion dollars so 2.3 trillion dollars this was a little bit higher before oh excuse me but that's okay things are still chugging along but looking a little bit i don't know worrisome in some ways gas prices have risen uh that's no good, but we are going to have a look at a story about that as well. All right, last 24 hours, what's pumped? What's done really well? Right, Dogecoin, yeah, absolutely screaming. I'm, yeah, please be careful with Dogecoin. I'm not trying to hate on it, but it doesn't have any real-world sort of use uh, at the moment, and it, it was just a, a meme coin. That's not to say it can't transform into something else, but just... Yeah, be careful. There's been you know a couple of sort of pumps, not pump and dumps, but anyway, some really big price spikes up and then followed by some, you know, reasonable retracements. But that's going to happen in every market. So anyway, Chili's coming back, starting to make another move. So well done to Chili's. I mean, this is what worries me. Ethereum Classic, 
there's not really anything happening on Ethereum Classic anymore, but it's still pumping. So that's what concerns me. Ethereum Classic pumping, you know, Dogecoin, you know, just continuing to pump and go from, you know, it was well under a cent to, you know, 36 cents. I mean, yeah, just buyer beware. VeChain doing well. At least this has got some real world use. So this I can understand. Bitcoin Cash, I mean, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see whether it's ever really going to be used for anything. Uh, Dash doing all right. Neo, again, sort of a dead chain that not really too much has been happening on, you know, sort of coming back to life. So these are the things that worry me a little bit. And look at the pumps. I mean, 15%, 20%, 20%, 20%, you know, 30%, 100% in 24 hours. That has me somewhat concerned. But in saying that, that has to do with this. Bitcoin dominance is down. That's what's happening. People are taking money out of Bitcoin and they're going altcoin, you know, Fishing is what I say to, you know, try and find the next 100x. So it's not all bad news, but, you know, these things can turn around fairly quickly. All right, let's have a look. What hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours, though? What's, yeah, gone the other direction? <laughs> all right, so makers down a little bit. Again, 14% still up, bit, you know, basically 55%. So nothing to worry about. With Xerox, again, it had such a crazy pump. It's probably going to come down for a while. Uh, never heard of it. Uh, KuCoin down. XRP, of course, it was going to have a bit of a retracement. Again, it can't pump so hard and you know not have a retracement. Solana, but I mean, look at these losses. There's not one that's over fifteen percent there. So no kind of really bad gains, but geez, there were some great gains there. So overall, you know, pretty good in that aspect, but the market is down though. So we need to consider that. Yes, yeah, some altcoins have pumped really well. That's because the dominance has gone down. But the overall market cap is down a little bit. And look, we still have sort of Sunday to come. I, I do think we'll have a bit more of a sell-off over the weekend and we'll see some more retracement. But I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. That's just the way it goes. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at the charts for a second. So again, Bitcoin, we can see it wicked uh, back down and touched this trend line. But look, that's all it did. It wicked down and it's still, it's holding pretty steadily at the moment around that kind of 62000 ish dollar mark thereabouts. So just under it, 61895 on the bitstamp sort of thing anyway. So holding pretty well. Again, we've still, you know, is the Sunday sell-off going to come? Because it's Saturday here in Australia. That means it's Friday over in the States, so still part of the weekday. And will we see the weekend retracement or is that it? Because sometimes it can come a lot earlier. Sometimes it comes on sort of the Thursdays and things like that. So that may be it, and it could be just further up. But look, I think if we pump too much, or really anything over the weekend, the CME gap will be uh, made, and it'll fill on Monday based on previous history. Now, again, CME gaps don't always fill, but gee, most of the time they do, and you need to keep that in mind. Right, Wall Street bets. It seems it's a turned around pretty quickly so we brought the story yesterday that wall street bets said they would now allow discussions about crypto uh trading and all the rest of it. well about three different cryptos uh and now they've turned around and stopped that as well because of an article that was done by bloomberg so the moderators of the famous reddit forum wall street bets known for putting game stock stock prices on the map as a worldwide trending topic lifted a ban on discussions related to bitcoin ethereum and dogecoin However, the discussion, the decision, sorry, has been reversed after a recently published Bloomberg article. So basically, Bloomberg came out and said, uh, Wall Street bets bows to crypto wave and allows Bitcoin discussion. And that's kind of uh, annoyed them by the sounds of it. And I, I don't know why. It's not bowing. It's just, you know, following public sentiment. But anyway... This is what's happened now. So due to the article that was written at Bloomberg, uh, who somehow felt that Wall Street bets bows to crypto, crypto discussion is banned indefinitely. I've read a lot of dumb articles written about uh, Wall Street bets. This one takes uh, the cake. P.S. Like always, please be respectful. Look, I think this will get overturned. This is, you know, just a... They got a little bit upset by what Bloomberg said, and I just think that was really poor words from Bloomberg saying that, Wall Street bets bowed to the crypto wave. They didn't bow and they're never going to bow. But look, if that's, you know, the thing that people want to talk about it and get into, well, then, of course, uh, Wall Street bets is, you know, 
going to basically get over here and you know <laughs> start to take advantage of that. And I think they're just a little bit ticked off at the moment and I don't think it'll take too long before cryptocurrencies are something that they start to discuss and that ban will be lifted. But very, very interesting in a matter of sort of 24 hours that whole thing got turned around. All right. Ethereum bulls, so they're hedging their bets ahead of this week's 250 million uh, Ethereum uh, options expiry. So 250 million in Ether options are set to expire on April 23rd, and derivatives data shows bull stools have a slight advantage. Now, this is what I found interesting. Ethereum, pa Ethereum, Ethereum paved the way for lower transaction costs with its Berlin upgrade on April 15th. And I did notice this for a bit, but... I mean, look, they're back up over 144 again. So, you know, they were down to around about kind of the 90s and 80s and back up to 144. So that didn't last too long. And it says here, the EIP introduces a base fee that will be burned when transaction occurs, while miners receive a tip for validating transactions. This move would severely pressure miners' earnings, but the proposal aims to tame the skyrocketing gas fees that have plagued the network for the past two years. And this is the issue. I mean, we've been over this a number of times. I get the miners want to make as much money as I can, and I, I don't, you know, sort of begrudge them for wanting to make more money, but they're hurting the entire space they're you know yes they might make less money in percentage wise but if they make it and uh, you know just get on board with this and allow it to be cheaper more people will come and use the system and that money will be made up at the moment only the really rich can use ethereum and yeah they can take these big massive gouges in gas fees out but if you took less percentage wise and made it super cheap for people to use you would get the rest of the world basically come and use it if it was super cheap at the moment they can so it's that catch 22 yeah for a while you may have to make less money but eventually as more people come to the to the network then you'll start to make more money less percentage wise but more total revenue because more people are using it so yeah, I, I understand where, you know, the miners are coming from. Everyone wants to make more money. No one wants to make less money. But, you know, the gas fees, they're hurting Ethereum and they're slowing it right down. I think overall you will make more money if the fees are lowered and more people come and use the system. All right. The Binance token, I mean, that has just been absolutely so soaring. I mean, let's go and have a look. Binance coin, it's now number three, and I mean $518. I bought this for about $30, $40 last year, and like I said, I'm kicking myself that I sold it, but you know, a, t a 10X, no one's gonna shy away from that, but I've had other coins that have done a lot better, so you know, it, it, it's just the way that it goes, but well done to Binance coin, but I think part of it is that they are starting to burn coins, mainly the cheaper fees, I think, is why people are you know, rushing to Binance coin, but this is also part of it. So the world's leading crypto exchange, Binance, has completed the 15th BNB burn and set a record in USD with nearly 600 million burned. Binance announced the completion of the 15th BNB burn earlier today and it was just shy of 1.1 million tokens. Although the amount of coins has substantially declined, so they're not burning as many coins anymore compared to the past several such events, it set a record in term of USD with almost $600 million. And I'd say they made a whole stack of money and that's why they burned uh, that many coins. So it's not like they're losing money. They're not losing money at all. They're definitely making money. So well done to Binance Coin. And yeah, look, they really are a great exchange. Uh, you know, centralized. I know a lot of people have issues with that. But yeah, their fees are just hard to beat. They are super cheap, super, super cheap. All right, here's an interesting story. So Jim Cramer from CNBC's Fast Money. He got into Bitcoin and he came out yesterday and said he sold half of it and there's a lot of upheaval about it. I, 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 there's two sides to this. So number one, a few days after showing interest to receive his, uh, uh, his salary in Bitcoin, CNBC's Jim Cramer has sold half of his Bitcoin position to pay off a mortgage. I don't think there's anything wrong with this at all. That is, you know, that's the definition of being smart with it he hasn't put it simply into cash that's you know kind of dying he's paid off a mortgage now look could he possibly get a whole lot more in the future for that bitcoin absolutely but he's going to get more from the mortgage as well so 
yeah, a lot of people were up in arms and stuff, and I don't think there's any issues with him doing that. It's what he said. Here's the problem, and I'll get onto it. So Jim Cramer, the host of CNBC's Mad Money, uh, has disposed of half of his Bitcoin holdings and used the substantial profits to pay off his mortgage. Again, nothing wrong with this. This is the smart decision. If you're gonna, you know, sell your Bitcoin, you may as well put, be putting it into something that's gonna do, you know, good in the long term. And paying off a mortgage is good. But this was the issue here, and this is what people are up in arms about, and I agree. He said, it's phony money for real money. That's where he's got it wrong. Bitcoin's not money. And, it, you know, they talk about currency, you know, cryptocurrencies. Their crypto investments is a better way uh, to really sort of talk about it. And even, uh, you know, most people would agree they're not being used as a currency. You're not doing day-to-day -day transactions and things like that. They are investment vehicles. So, you know, it's not phony money, but again, that is really annoying that he said that, but look, he has done the smart thing. He bought it at $12,000. He bought Bitcoin at 12,000. He sold half of all of it for $57,000. So, I mean, you know, he's forexed his money basically from there. Nothing wrong with that. And he's paid off a mortgage. So he's no longer paying that, but look, I think he may have jumped the gun a little bit early, and in the long term, I don't think the mortgage will be able to keep up uh, with the, you know, it, the growth of Bitcoin at least over the next sort of ten to twenty years. After that, at some point, Bitcoin's going to kind of level out, and we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, so smart decision that if he was going to, you know, sell, that he wasn't just simply selling for cash. He's paid off a mortgage. But the way he's phrased that is really poor. Phony money for real money. Bitcoin's not phony money. It's not money. It's an investment. But anyway, we'll move on. We'll see. He's probably made, I would say, look, he has made a smart decision there. Whether it's the smartest decision he could have made, no. And the way he phrased it was definitely really, really poor. All right, so Kathy Woods of ARK. So two days after Coinbase's direct listing on the NASDAQ, three of ARK's funds now hold a combined 1 million Coinbase shares and they're valued at around $352 million. So they went uh, quite heavy into Coinbase. And again, we spoke about it yesterday. Uh, it peaked at like 300 and I think, sorry, $480 or something. Excuse me, 400, it was 400 and something dollars. Dropped back down to like 300 and something dollars and then I think it finished around $380. And that was yesterday. I think Coinbase shares will do well in the future. But I will be looking to get into Coinbase shares at the, you know, if there's a more reasonable size dip. But I think that will most likely come in the next bear market. When we have that next bear market, these uh, Coinbase shares will likely come down. I'm not saying they're going to be cheaper than where they are now. We'll have to wait and see. But I think they'll likely come down during a bear market. And that'll be the... Uh, time that I think I'll look to get into some but you know again I don't think these shares will do as well as the crypto assets themselves in the sort of longer term so whether I you know put too much into Coinbase or not I don't know I'd rather put into the crypto currencies themselves but moving on right Edward Snowden he's made an NFT and he sold it for 5.4 million Ethereum oh, I worry about these NFTs. Look, I'm all for them and I like what they're about, but geez, I just don't know if they're worth some of the prices that they're going for at the moment. 5.4 million for something that has uh, his face on it and stay free uh, written underneath it. I don't know if that's worth 5.4 million Ethereum. I guess time will tell and I hope that the person who bought that uh, gets their money's worth. That just seems like a, a lot of money. I think that's the NFT uh, in there, it's something like that. Yeah, 5.4 million. I mean, he's laughing. He got $5.4 million. Uh, just, you know, hopefully the people who bought that in, in the long term, in the short term, I'm sure that's going to lose uh, some money. Long term, you know, years to come, maybe not. We'll wait and see. All right, Coinbase, even more Coinbase news. They are now offering, uh, they, sorry, they're upgrading everyone to ETH 2.0. So if you've got ETH, uh, being staked on Coinbase, they're going straight to ETH 2.0, so you can start to earn up to 6% interest. So this is pretty good. ETH 2.0 is already starting to happen fairly quickly. You know, there's a lot of companies that are already trying, not trying to, they are migrating their ETH, you know, 1.0 over to ETH 2.0. So uh, this is good for anyone who is, you know, got their ETH staking on 
Coinbase, yeah, that ETH 2.0 straight away, no longer ETH 1.0. All right. A trio of Ethereum ETFs are set to launch in North America. So the ETFs, uh, ETFs applications were filed by Purpose Investments, Evolve ETFs, and CI Global Asset Management. So again, this is in Canada. This is not in uh, the United States of America. But, you know, Canada already had a Bitcoin ETF come out, and now they have applications for three different Ethereum ETFs. This is, you know... The mass adoption, it is happening all in front of us, you know, but it's it doesn't just kind of happen overnight. So if someone thought all of a sudden cryptocurrencies take over, no. They are now in the big, you know, again, what will be considered the smart money and the early adopters, um, and that is, you know, all these big institutions that are getting in, they normally get in before the average Joe. I'm not saying they don't get in before, you know, any normal investors. Some lucky normal investors get in first but it's usually a very small amount. Then the big corporations get in and then everyone else gets in after that is generally the way it works. And that's what's happening at the moment. These ETFs, you know, all the big companies are getting into them and then slowly but surely, you know, your mum, your dad, you know, me, you, the average Joe will start to invest in things like this. I mean, we're already here early, so we're ahead of that, but this is how it happens. All right, last but not least, Coinbase misses out on Dogecoin. A lot of Coinbase news at the moment. So they haven't listed Dogecoin and Binance did and the token has rallied 6,000% this year alone. So we can go down here. Uh, the dodgy meme face token has risen uh, to more than 6,000% for the year to date. Sorry, year to date. I mean, that is a massive gain. And like I said, I bought Dogecoin twice. I doubled my money both times. So I was happy with it, but I'm just kicking myself that yeah, I didn't hold on to any. But look, you can't win them all. And 6,000%, that is one hell of a game. But I am concerned that there's going to be people left holding these. There always is. But I'm just, uh, what I'm most concerned about is I don't know if Dogecoin has a real use case yet. Uh, it, it was a meme coin. It was always created as a bit of a joke. That doesn't mean it can't transition into something. But, uh, you know, to start off with, it's just a meme coin. That's all it is. So yeah, just buy a beware. I'm not saying don't get any Dogecoin, but geez, you might be, you know, caught holding, you know, Dogecoin at 38 cents and all of a sudden it drops back down to, you know, two cents or, or below a cent. And again, I'm not saying it's going to do that. Please don't everyone start suddenly hating on me. But look, it could happen. It's just something you need to keep in mind. This was well under a cent, like well under a cent. And now it's 38 cents. So we just, yeah. Please be careful. That's what I would say. All right, that's it from me. Weekend's here. I'm going to get off and enjoy it. I mean, the market is looking pretty good. Let's have a look. Two, three, one, three, going down a little bit more, or up a little bit more. Let's have a look. Two, three, one, eight, coming down a little bit. Again, the weekend retracement. Uh, I do think this plays out even more considering uh, we still got Sunday to come. I mean, that's, you know, it's Monday Australian time usually when they have the Sunday dip. So I do think uh, this will come down a little bit. So again, uh, keep an eye out for that. Could be really, really good buying opportunities, but, you know, don't, oh, I won't say don't because I can't offer financial advice. Just be careful if you're rushing into Doge. I mean, 500% in seven days and 100% in 24 hours. That is crazy stuff going on be very very careful all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment if you are you've done pretty well because the markets are down a little bit and i'll see you next time